I get what you're saying. But it's impossible to please God if he remembers your sins, right? And yes. the only way that he could forget your sins is through Jesus' sacrifice. Yes. So yeah, that makes, makes a lot of sense. Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast, brought to you by Two Bricks and a Bible. Today is day 353, covering Hebrews 7, 8, 9, and 10. Well, awesome, awesome. Let's keep going. Um, so I'm way at the beginning of this uh, with Hebrews 7, 19. Um, so I'm just going to be talking for a bit. So um, I just have a little nap, to be honest. Yeah, could do, honestly. Nice. That's a pretty good recline on that chair. Okay, so Hebrews 7.19, the law made nothing perfect and a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. So the law could never have been have perfected us because we are imperfect is what I got from that. So it's this understanding that the Jewish Christians, the Jews who became Christians start to get like, yeah, the law from God, it was there as a guideline, but we could never have been perfected through it. That then links to 7.26 a high priest truly meets our needs, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. So that kind of then also points to, look, Ten Commandments are incredibly important and sacred, but they were there to point towards Jesus and to kind of almost nowadays it's used for evangelistic purposes, right? Like if you say to someone about the Ten Commandments, most of them have broken most of the Ten Commandments. They're supposed to kind of convict us and make us realize, wow, we're not even managing that let alone the 600 odd levitical laws whatever right so only jesus and holy spirit god can perfect us over time that's my first point from hebrews and that's good man i like that point yeah like the whole system is flawed from the word go from the minute adam and eve took bite out of the apple it needed to be fixed exactly exactly um then just so we've got something in hebrews 8 just a quick one so uh, Hebrews 8 verse 12, I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. And I just said, amen, thank the Lord, quite literally. And it's amazing, really, isn't it, to think that Jesus' righteousness literally covers our sins. So it's not like forgiven or li- live and let live or whatever. Or it's literally, no, it's forgotten. It's gone. It's not It's not there anymore. Let's, yeah. let's think about it. So yeah. that's, it's just a fantastic gift of grace. It is. And it's so interesting. I think I can't remember whether it's here or further on in Hebrews or maybe even later on where it's saying that without faith, it's impossible to please God. That it's like, well, that point you just made there, like it, it's fine. But without that, it's impossible. I don't know, man. My yeah. pretty no, much- I, I get what you're saying, but it's impossible to please God if he remembers your sins. Right. And yes. the only way that he could forget your sins is through Jesus sacrifice. Yeah, so yeah, that makes Thank makes some sense. It's all good. It's all good. I, I'll be I'll be Adam's translator while his brain is being eaten by a bacteria or virus or whatever's going on at the moment. Yeah, that sounded very serious, and I appreciate it. I think yeah, it's, it's just man death flu. Yeah, yeah. Uh, man not death. COVID. Testing negative for COVID. I think it's just man flu. But so much worse than when I had COVID. It's friggin' annoying. Anyway, um, I had nothing yeah. but a thing, though, mate. <laughs> good for you. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> So 914, um, Jesus's sacrifice and blood helps us to cleanse our consciences from the acts that lead to death. Like it's the thought that lead to the act. And that's where this whole take captive every thought is just so important still. Um, that was my point. I'm just reading it. Uh, 914, it is back on that page. Um, 914? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from the acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God? It's that concept of cleansing our consciences, like just through knowing God, being in touch with him and his Holy Spirit and everything that cleanses our consciences subconsciously. But through doing that, we need to then have a conscious effort in it as well. Yeah, no, that's good. And that's that's so right. Like. When the blood of the lamb washes you clean, you actually start to become conscious of how dirty you were, right? And you can sort of see that where, with anything that you clean. Like you might look at your car or your clothes or whatever and be like, ah, they're pretty clean. And then you give them a good wash and you're like, whoa, they were really dirty actually. Yeah. So it's kind of obviously not that, but sort of that ish. So, you know, I love that. And I really love that point of take every thought captive because what I was trying to say the other day is, Clearly, Jesus would have seen beautiful women and and seen unjust stuff and been had the potential of being angry because he was tempted. He was human, right? 
human and God, 100% of each, but he never sinned, therefore it must be possible to be in that place of temptation but not act on it, yeah. even in your mind, even before that, right? Yeah. And I'll give you an example of what I think that might mean. Like if you see, a, a as men, if you see a beautiful woman and then you have thoughts of, lustful thoughts of what you might want to do with them, whatever, I think that's then where you've committed adultery in your heart, right? Whereas I think if you see a beautiful woman, or uh, I'm obviously talking about particularly the sin of lust here, but you don't allow yourself, you hold captive the thought, like you say, to not actually indulge in any of that, even for a moment, then I think that you have not acted out anything sinful. You've just That's observed true. something, but you haven't allowed yourself to be taken down that path. Yeah, it's when that thought goes from being an instinctive thought to an active thought, I think is the way I've sort of thought it before. Okay. And like, yeah, that instant like, oh, wow. But then it's how you then choose to then move forward with that instant, almost an uh, um, an involuntary, an involuntary recognition, an involuntary thought over then choosing to pursue that and feed that right. thought, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. So. Oh. Um, nice. nine, 16 I love this I, in equal measures to it confusing me because it was talking about in the case of a will it's necessary to prove the death of the one who made it because a will is in force only when somebody's died it never takes effect when the one who made it is living this is why the first even the first covenant was not put into effect without blood and just the way that made sense is like actually it needs death for it to become active that covenant needs death in order for there to be atonement for sin so in the old testament the old covenant it was the sins uh the blood of bulls and rams and stuff like that but that can't take away your sin or it can't like forgive your sins it can just take away the previous sins as opposed to the sin the final death on the cross of jesus is what then does it sort of future and moving forward so yeah yeah measure confusing and exciting um I yeah. I think why I'd add to that is that I, I, I think that the, the animal sacrifices could like temporarily cleanse of the sins, right? Because every year at the tabernacle, there was the like atonement and the priest would go into the Holy of Holies and would use blood of animals to atone for the whole of Israel's sins, right? But I think the difference is, is that like, it was almost like paying a fine. So it was just like, it wasn't an ultimate pardon. Yeah. It was like, oh, you know, it's a fine. And so, and that kind of makes sense, right? Because say an animal's worth 50 shekels just randomly for no yeah. reason. It has so to cost it, something, right? It costs something and therefore it shows a repentance physically or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, none of it could possibly be like uh, Jesus. That actually adds on really nicely to my point on Hebrews 9, verse 22, which says, in fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Now, this one I'm about to read is not me. This is EnduringWord.com. I've mentioned them many times, and I'm going to use them a lot in Revelation, just so you know. But anyway, uh, they say in, in uh, Enduring Word, this is a foundational principle of God's dealings with men. Modern people think that sin is remitted or forgiven by time or our good works or by living decent lives or simply by our death. But that is not how we get forgiveness. Forgiveness without the shedding of blood is not perfect forgiveness. And therefore it leads that you need a perfect sacrifice. So I thought that was a pretty good explanation of it, really. It's like, we can have our own views of justice, but that's not God's actual way of doing justice. Yeah. He chose to do it this way. Yeah, no, that's massive, man. Um, I got one fairly big point last. Do you want to get yours in? No, quick? no well, the, Hebrews 10, verse 5, just Adam, I think you were like, it's obedience over sacrifice again. So. Amen, bro. Um, so... The thing that I've focused on here is 10 verse 26 and 27. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we've received the knowledge of truth, no sacrifice of sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Later on, it goes to say that we've insulted the spirit of grace. So it's like if we choose to keep sinning, we are insulting the spirit of grace, which is the whole, oh, we're forgiven. Should we keep on sinning there, which is Romans sort of six and eight? that's not the point at all we're actually actively insulting it and there's no sacrifice for you there's no sacrifice big enough which sorry there is because jesus sacrifice is big enough for all but if you are choosing to keep on sinning then actually you're in big trouble at that stage like you really need to check your heart um and then last little thing uh 11 faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain things we do not see faith in things we don't see and then what we said yesterday in six it says without faith it's impossible to please god so that's where we got that from sorry if we've run over a little smidgen tomorrow the rest of hebrews we will see you there like share subscribe take it easy